Hello and welcome. In this tutorial, we are going to talk about how to install Hot Chocolate as a GraphQL server, how to query GraphQL server, and also we'll talk brief about GraphQL itself. So, here is our agenda. We have GraphQL introduction. We are going to talk about installing GraphQL using Hot Chocolate and GraphQL queries. First things first, we already have a GraphQL tutorial. We have talked about the differences between GraphQL and REST API, and also we talked a lot of interesting stuff related to GraphQL. And this is a short uh, data from this video. The GraphQL helps us to have one request instead of multiple. GraphQL helps us to have one endpoint instead of multiple. Also, GraphQL helps us to avoid versioning like in a REST API. In REST API, we have versioning when we need some changes, but in GraphQL, you can in most cases avoid versioning. GraphQL helps us exactly to get what we want rather than having all the data. GraphQL is a better solution when you need to avoid overfetching and underfetching. And also GraphQL is a mobile friendly for that reason in most cases for the mobile driven development and the mobile applications, we are using GraphQL rather than the REST API. And the last thing is GraphQL helps us to do fast iteration instead of waiting for the backend guys to add and remove some fields. So let's go for the second uh, part of our agenda. We have installing, we should install GraphQL using our chocolate library. So for that reason, I prepared a GraphQL empty solution for you. We have just a GraphQL empty solution here. I'm going to add a web API. And for this web API, I will integrate GraphQL server using hot chocolate. So uh, let's go right click add new project. Let's select is.net core web API. And for the web API, I'm going to rename it like the GraphQL.API. For the GraphQL.API, I will use .NET 7. This is for now the latest version of .NET and all the other configurations will remain same. So let's hit create. This is just going to create empty web API with weather forecast um, road, but I will add hot chocolate to handle GraphQL queries. So tools, Nougat package manager, package manager console. Let's add hot chocolate. So install package hot chocolate dot asp dot net core. So it will install hot chocolate. So let's wait for it. So installation process is done. And now it is time to configure hot chocolate. For the hot chocolate, we'll need to add a GraphQL server and uh, prepare our query, plus add the mapping for the GraphQL route. I'm just going to hit add, add GraphQL. Let's do it in a separate builder dot services at GraphQL server. At GraphQL server will help us to run GraphQL server actually as a separate server to handle GraphQL queries. For the GraphQL query, I need to create a query class here. Actually, you can rename it as any you want, but for now we'll use the same template because for this example, we are going to make things as easy as possible. And for the hot chocolate, we'll use annotation based approach where the GraphQL schema will be resolved from our C sharp classes. So my class name is going to be query and inside this query, I will have some method with string returning. It is going to be get person info. Okay, and it returns, I don't know, the Simon Baker. <laughs> cool. Okay, now I need to uh, notify GraphQL that we already have this query and the use annotation based approach from this query class. Add query type from query itself. Cool. 
Now we have everything prepared from the services side. The only thing we are missing here is actually the routing process. So you, uh, map, GraphQL, and when you see that from the description, from the comment side, you see that it has default slash GraphQL route to reach out to exact GraphQL interface. Everything is ready. I have a simple method here. I will uh, talk about this method and we will add additional methods. But for now, let's see what we have from the GraphQL perspective. It is going to run the weather forecast as a default route because in my configuration, I have in my properties, I have default route for weather forecast. It is a default behavior in Web API templates. I'm going to change it to GraphQL and let's wait for it cool in graphql actually in hot chocolate we have built in great ui interface this is banana cake book and you need to hit create document to actually to query and see uh, what we have in a schema in our schema we have a query and inside this query we have person info so let's talk brief about the operations in graphql we have three types of operations they are query mutation and subscription query is equivalent to rest api's http get mutations are equivalent to http post put delete and patch for the graphql uh, subscriptions unfortunately in the rest side we don't have any equivalent in our schema, we have person info, but in our application, we don't have person info. We actually have get person info. GraphQL uses annotation based approach for this resolver to remove it is pref verbal prefix. So it's going to be person info rather than get person info. And our query class has multiple resolvers. In our case, we have only one resolver, but when you add multiple methods, every method is going to be your resolver. GraphQL uses this resolver actually to add fields to the query. In my case, I have only one single um, field here and it is person info in a string type because in GraphQL we have complex types we have primitive types string int boolean and etc are going to be our uh, scalar types and for the complex type we are able to create even scalar and also the complex types let's create our first query I'm just using curly brackets here and typing person info that's all it is actually a piece of cake for us to query graphql and when you hit run you are getting all the information you may ask where is our query how graphql deals with this query and grabs information from this method because in graphql we already have built in type called query so when you create a query class actually graphql maps it is query type to your query class and resolves from your method actual field and your method is going to be a field with removed prefixes like get or etc and if this method is returning complex type, you will see additional complex type definition below. But if it is integer string and etc., uh, they they are actual uh, primitive types. And you can see uh, here that the person info is in a string type and it is required type. And when you want to query with arguments you may actually do it easily you just need to add arguments to your resolver it is equivalent to adding arguments to your method so string um, name and in my case i will just map this name from here and that's all let's debug it again go to our graphql 
from the schema uh, from the schema reference you already see that there is uh, dots here and it means person info accepts some type of arguments let's go to operations and when you run it it will not work because person info is actually a field which requires some type of arguments here and when you open the these brackets you see that it is name let's put some name here let's put test name and run it and now everything is working actually let's try to talk about query itself in our case we typed anonymous query here but if you want to provide arguments if you want to do detailed logging to see which query, which named query sent this query, you need to add the operation part to your query. So in my case, it is going to be just query because in GraphQL, you can avoid queries. Actually, this is a built-in default behavior in GraphQL. For that reason, there is no need to define that it is query. But if you are doing some type of subscription mutation, you should actually define that it is mutation or subscription. In my case, the query is a um, by default be operation behavior in GraphQL, in Autocolate itself. So I'm just avoiding using query but if you want to provide some type of arguments you should definitely uh, define the query header so query and let's name it simple query and i will provide this part from the argument actually i want to provide a dollar name as an argument to my person info but without defining it in the root it is not possible to send these arguments okay and i am just typing name and it is going to be not nullable string cool now in GraphQL variable side in the below, we have curl brackets and it requires this name from here because without it, it will not work. So let's define the name. The banana cake has a great possibilities and one of them that automatically fill the property name, automatically fill the missing fields. And uh, let's type just first name and let's run it now this name will be taken from this query as a string and will be sent to the person info well now let's make our query a little bit complicated with additional complex data types so i will just use um, i don't know maybe the person information probably record person it is going to be integer id and string name i don't need any other validations or some type of li property limitations so i'm just using a record here let's return i enumerable person and it is going to be get people okay it is completely okay for us person information and of course this person will have let's return it and new person id1 on mabaki new person to orote topo cool now we have two resolvers here every resolver item is going to be a property of query in the graphql side now we have one scalar it's going to be scalar and one complex field in the graphql side let's debug it and see from the schema side GraphQL and from the schema definition 
you see that we have person info it is just a string returns not nullable string and we have people because graphql using annotation based approach will remove the get or other verbs there and we have people as a complex data type the person type which uh, consists from id and name and this is uh, this is an array of person which array is not nullable and array items are not nullable in this case okay let's go to the operations let's try another operations when you want to differentiate your queries you are querying to the same endpoint but you have a different properties different fields you need to use the query name so we have three main places where we need to use query names one for logging the other one uh, for the fields we want to differentiate and the third one is variable providing i am creating another query here the second query and for my second query i am trying to retrieve people information but these people will not work because graphql have uh, GraphQL has validation from the fields perspective. We have strongly typed schema and using the strongly typed schema, GraphQL actually can validate the fields. So validation showed that the people, we don't know what is inside this people. You should provide the exact scholar fields for these people. Actually, let's try to run it. So the people is an object interface or union type field. It is not possible to run it. So let's try to grab id and name let's run it and it is working cool now we have two different queries for the same endpoint but if i want to query to one endpoint using one query i can easily do it i can just remove this query and I can run it. Cool. So GraphQL is really excellent API for us. It helps to avoid resolver based approach. Every resolver is actually a field. So the, from the class, you can request any fields at the same time. So you can parallelize your GraphQL queries in mutation. We don't have parallelization, but for the query we have quite well implemented parallelization and it helps you to um, query in a parallel way to retrieve information from different resolvers well actually that's all uh, we talked about graphql what is graphql we talked about hot chocolate installation for graphql and also we talked a lot about graphql queries uh, if you like our videos, please hit subscribe button and see you in the next tutorial.